Then Percy arrived to take George away. He was still rebelling. Railways are no good. Turn them into roads. Because this disturbance will have me to answer to. Well, one thing's for sure, said Gordon. He won't choose Dirty Percy. Don't call me Dirty Percy. He chuffed crossly and he wished away. Help, cried Percy. I'm not a truck. But Yikes. Help, save me. A quick thinking shunter did just in time. What was that? exclaimed James. The signalman warned the station master at the next station. There's a runaway coming. We'll send them into the sidings. Help, help, called Toad again. King Percy puffed back to the coal mines. When he arrived, the truck started teasing him. Percy, Percy, green and small, he's no use to us at all. Around the yards he'll puff and blow, but on the hills he's oh so slow. Be quiet. Go to it, Percy, shouted the driver as they started to climb the hill. The trucks were still joking. Too slow, more power, here all night, tomorrow too. Be quiet, said Percy angrily. Then there was trouble. A coupling broke. Surprise, surprise, catch us if you can. Oh, no, cried Percy. Oliver just grew unhappier, and he was rough with the trucks. You're no good, Oliver. You're dangerous. We want Percy. Pa, Percy's far too busy to be bothered with the likes of you, and he bumped the trucks hard. You silly engine, shouted a workman. It'll take a long time to repair this turntable, which will cause confusion and delay. At last, Harold landed. Sorry I'm late, Great Western. Had a bit of a problem with one of my arms. Kept letting me down when I was meant to be up. You know how it is, said Harold. Harvey arrived to clear the track for Thomas. Hmm, how did you get into this mess? He boomed. I was looking for the tuba player. Moan Thomas. Hmm, look and listen, Harvey said thoughtfully. If he's a tuba player, he might be playing the tuba. Stop being pushy, Donald snapped. Don't call me pushy, Douglas snapped back. You shouldn't have pushed me into the cart, huffed Donald. You pulled me, you mean, argued Douglas. Didn't he? Did. Did, no. Did, too. Then things started to go wrong. Did you shunt those trucks onto the other line? Donald asked. You said you wanted them on the other line, Duck replied. No, that other line. The other other line. Donald was cross. Douglas would have known what I meant, he huffed. Douglas was working on his own. He chuffed dutifully through the beautiful countryside. But Douglas had no one to share it with. Although he tried not to, he was beginning to miss his twin. That night, Douglas's driver took him to visit Donald. I was just passing, said Douglas. Have you come to say you're sorry? Donald sniffed. This made Douglas very cross. I've nothing to be sorry for, he said, and steamed away in a huff. The next day, Donald was in a bad mood. Duck could see he was getting too close to the buffers. Look out, he shouted, but it was too late. Donald's driver was very cross. This wouldn't have happened if you were working with Douglas, he said. Donald knew he was right, and Duck knew he couldn't pull Donald back onto the rails. So he went for help. Douglas was sadly finishing his work as Duck steamed into the depot. Donald's in trouble, said Duck. Donald in trouble, Douglas cried. I'm on my way, and he steamed off as fast as he could. Douglas struggled and struggled. He finally pulled his twin gently back onto the tracks. 
He was relieved Donald wasn't hurt. Thank you, Donald said, and I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, said Douglas. I'm sorry, insisted Donald. You don't have to have a row about who's sorry, chuckled Duck. Just be glad you're back together. And they were. I'm here to collect the Queen of Sodor, announced James. There she is, said the yard manager. James was furious. That old tub! Gordon tricked me. He wants me to get dirty. I'll show him. A shiny engine like me never gets dirty. Return from the quarry. My whistle is clogged again. Watch out, James. Dust went everywhere. I did warn you. You'll need a wash down now, teased Thomas. Good! snorted James. It will make me readier than ever. I'm such a splendid engine. Oh. Oh. When Duncan reached the safety of his shed, he closed his eyes tightly. Spooked are you, Duncan? laughed his driver. No, wailed Duncan. I'm asleep. Suddenly. Oh no, it's behind us. Meanwhile, Scar Lowy was making his way up to the quarry. Then he saw Boulder. Yikes! Boulder rounded a bend and there ahead was Reneus. It's running loose, yelled Reneus. His driver drove him back as fast as he could. Yikes! She's got a dog, said Percy. I thought it did. She was taking a bath and the water was slopping about all over the place. Ooh, she cried. He blew an extra long whistle. This frightened the visitor's dog so much that he fled from the station and ran into a field where a bull was grazing. The bull frightened the little dog even more. He ran back again, onto the platform and over the bridge. He didn't stop until he jumped straight into Thomas's cab. Abofof, Abofof. What's the matter with you, Henry? Thomas asked. My boiler's grumbling. Maybe it's grumbling at you. That's not funny, hissed Henry. You just don't care. When the engines woke the next morning, they could not believe their eyes. The sheds had been repainted and decorated. Parcels lay everywhere. The engines whistled in delight and everyone agreed that it was really a happy Christmas.